Hello everyone and welcome to a, a first edition actually of a, a special edition of the I Work in Sports live interview. Uh, this is the Meet the Programs series, something we, we're launching new. Um, as you know, in about uh, two weeks time, uh, from the 10th to the 12th of November, uh, we'll host the second edition of the I Work in Sport Education Virtual Expo. Uh, that's a digital event for anyone interested in starting a career, or even if you're already uh, is working, if you're if you already are working in in, in sports, uh, it's an, okay, an opportunity for you to boost uh, or improve uh, your career in sports through education. Uh, it's free to attend. Uh, the link is in the description below. Uh, at the events, uh, anyone that uh, goes there will have the chance to connect in real time and interact with uh, course representatives and, and alumni uh, from uh, major uh, courses, international courses in, in sports management and get all the information you need to know in one-to-one -one conversations. Uh, we decided to create it, to create not a teaser, but uh, I would say a prelude to the event uh, and invited some of the programs that will be there to already share some valuable information with you. Uh, today, we'll start with the Johan Cruyff Institutes. They are based in Amsterdam and Barcelona. Tomorrow, we're gonna uh, talk with the European Sport Business School in Valencia. Uh, Wednesday, it's the University of Oregon. In fact, that uh, will be a little different uh, from this series because it's a, a rescheduled interview uh, with Professor Bettina Cornwell uh, she has a, an amazing book in sponsorship that uh, we were supposed to, to have her in the show a few weeks ago. We had to reschedule. And since Oregon, now it's going to be at the event as well. So we put her in this uh, week. So we'll talk about that course as well. And on Thursday, we're going to close with the FIFA Master uh, that has uh, the course distributed between uh, UK, uh, Italy and Switzerland. Now. If you're interested in this type of content, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, and hit the bell sign to get a notification for the videos. Uh, if you're watching this on LinkedIn, you can maybe do it uh, later. And well, while you're at it, uh, you might as well just hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. Uh, and don't forget, like we do it every week, leave your questions. This is going to be interactive. If you have questions about the uh, Johan Cruyff Institute and their programs, make sure you, you leave uh, your questions there. Uh, also tell us maybe where you're watching it from. And since many of the programs actually require some sort of bachelor, uh, they require a bachelor degree because many of them are, are masters in sports or, or, or MBAs. So you might as well leave a note and say what we studied in, in university, if you have. Uh, if you're watching the replay, leave your comments as well, because that, you know, the, the course representatives might take a look at your questions and that uh, will help them prepare uh, for, uh, for the session during the days at, at the event. And, um, and yeah, I think this is, this is it in terms of uh, present this, uh, this, this show. I am João Frigerio. I should have introduced myself. If this is your first time here, I'm the founder of uh, of I work in sport. And today we're going to talk about, uh, as I said, Johan Cruyff Institute. And to do that, I have the pleasure to invite to the show uh, Marielle Kurhaus, 
I'm pretty sure I didn't get that exactly right, but I hope that uh, it's not too far off. She is the general manager of the Institute. And I think that is best if I let her introduce herself. So let me invite her to the show. Maria, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for inviting me and for having me. Yeah, you're, you're the first one. So this is um, sort of, as I explained, a new series. We've been doing live interviews for well, since probably the, the, the beginning of, of the year. Uh, it's been great fun. There's always a lot of interaction. I see that there's some people already leaving some comments here. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice pleasure to, to have you with us. Uh, representing the Johan Cruyff Institute that, well, you have been a partner, the Cruyff Institute have been a partner of uh, our work in sports since the beginning. It's yeah. one of, I would say, founding academic partners. And um, yeah, it's really a pleasure to, to have you on board. Let, just before we start, let me just uh, say, uh, there's um, Regina Justo watching from, from Brazil. Let's have a sense where people are. Lavinia Falesia from Lausanne. Hello, uh, uh, Lavinia. The Georgios Komnenos from Greece. Oh, Mithila uh, from India. There's some more uh, people from India here. Well, yeah, people are, are coming or starting to, to leave their questions. We're going to talk about that. Let me take a Franklin. Thank you for watching from uh, Goa in, in India. Uh, Mariel, so before we actually talk about the Johan Cruyff Institute, let's um, maybe talk a little about you. Um, you're Dutch with, for me, a difficult surname to speak, yeah. uh, living in Barcelona for, for some time now. Tell us about how you started uh, to, to work in that field of education and in particular, um, with your time with your um, with the Johan Cruyff Institute, please. Okay, thank you, thank you for the introduction, uh, Joe, and uh, a pleasure to be here. As you said, uh, we're, we're one of the the founding or the first partners of I Work in Sports, and uh, always very excited to uh, to be there in in Lausanne uh, each year. Of course, this year is a little bit different uh, because of the COVID nineteen, but uh, but I think that uh, that to really solve the situation and the challenge of going virtual really uh, really in a in a br brilliant way. So uh, I hope this is. I'm looking forward to this uh, this this of you and uh, I've seen uh, already some people from all over the world uh, watching us so that's great um, an introduction about myself well as you said you did a, a good job uh, uh, pronouncing my surname uh, I'm Dutch uh, obviously I have a background in, uh, in business administration um, at some point and actually as, as part of the the program or the the study program I did um, I also studied Spanish uh, during my bachelor so actually that was the main reason why I also wanted to have besides like uh, a curiosity of having international experience, but also to be able to practice and really put into practice my, my Spanish. I uh, I came to Barcelona now uh, 30, 32 years ago, so th so that's more than half of my whole life. <laughs> um, and actually, I have been um, in working in, in different sectors in uh, marketing and communication consultancy for some years. I've also uh, I've been working in international commerce in the uh, in the B two B industrial sector. Sector. And at some point um, of my professional career and still being quite young, I decided to do an MBA program at, uh, at Isada Business School here in Barcelona. Um, and that was actually uh, from that moment on when I started uh, to work also and to expand my interest in education and mainly executive education. At Isada Business School, when I finished up my, my MBA, I was, uh, I was recruited uh, by the uh, the dean's office to help setting up a faculty uh, development program <clears throat> and uh, after a year i was invited at executive education uh, at that at that stage and i'm talking about like nearly 20 years ago 22 years ago inside a business school was in uh, a major uh, development of uh, globalizing so uh, i i uh, could add some value there and uh, I, the, in the executive education area, I, um, I worked for some years as associate director for the open enrollment programs. And this was the moment when I 
got in contact with uh, Johan Cruyff uh, Institute. Uh, this was more or less the beginning of the first MBA in sport management program, which the Johan Cruyff Institute wanted to develop in Barcelona for, uh, for elite athletes. And I came on board. They asked me to, to come on board and I was excited about the sports industry, which I didn't know that until that moment that much. Um, but I, of course, because of my Dutch, uh, my, my Dutch background, um, an environment of sports, which is very dynamic, which is different. Um, and also, um, well, well, adding value and trying to help um, with the academic quality and, and putting the first MBA program uh, into place was really very uh, an exciting uh, challenge. So this is where um, now it's uh, 16 years ago when I first started also um, a teaching. Uh, I did some, some teaching in uh, entrepreneurial sh entrepreneurship within the sports industry. And um, well, until then I have been uh, for some years also switching to the Polytechnic University at quite different university here in Barcelona for a few years because I was invited there to develop the strategy of uh, postgraduate and master programs in engineering and IT and architecture, which also was a very different experience and I thought, well, fruitful experience. I did that for five years and then I was invited back again by the Johan Graf Institute um, to help uh, uh, align basically the international strategy of Johan Cruyff Institute and uh, after a year I was asked to uh, well to uh, to take the position of general manager and this is now nearly five years ago so um, and it's a pleasure it's uh, the, the organization has changed a lot over the last years and this is where I am cool cool now it's uh, it's great to to get to know you a little better as I said I of course know that uh, Johan Cruyff well and I'm going to say in the English way, the Johan Cruyff Institute for, for a long time. You have uh, an amazing team there with uh, Christina and, and Gemma and uh, I mean, the, the, the whole team, really. Um, they've been wonderful. And it's nice to finally get to, to meet you. And I'd like to know more. Then uh, let's start uh, telling the people, the, the audience that, that is watching more about the, the history of uh, Johan Cruyff. Uh, mm -hmm. It has more than 20 um, years old. I think it was founded in the, in, in the last year of the century, right? It was in 1999. Uh, 99. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And um, yeah, if you can tell us um, a little bit more about the history and what you, you have achieved um, with that, that would be fantastic. Just, just to give you a sense of very quickly, who you're talking to. I'm just going to read a few more names because it's people from all over the world. Coach Abdul from South Africa. Uh, it's uh, usually here with us, Nigel Seal. Walter Spencer mm -hmm. from Uruguay, the son of uh, legendary uh, forward from uh, Peñarol. Uh, mm -hmm. An Angela Ochoa from the Netherlands, I think from Maastricht. Uh, Rishon from India, Ricardo from Brazil. There's Serge, a good friend of mine from Gabon. Hello, uh, mm -hmm. there's someone from Saudi, Noemi from Switzerland, all over, we're talking wow. to all over the world. So okay, interesting. The Johan Cruyff Institute to them. That's so nice, we're covering the five continents. <laughs> Welcome Pretty to everybody. Nice. More and more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, Johan, Johan Cruyff, uh, of course, uh, legendary football player, coach, uh, visionary man. Uh, at some point in his life, he um, he wanted actually, he had two big social, um, um, how you would say, like, like, like concerns, right? Oh, one, yeah. Yeah, one was uh, how can we somehow for kids and young people that uh, have uh, different circumstances, different capacities, physical and mental limitations, and who might be living in um, areas of social uh, risk of social exclusion, how can we improve quality of life? And this is, was the beginning of the, uh, the nonprofit organization, which Johan Cruyff um, founded also uh, now nearly 20 years ago, which is the, the Johan Cruyff Foundation. And the other big social concern that Johan had was how can we enable dual careers for athletes? How is it possible that uh, athletes who are very passionate about their sports career can continue their studies while they're having their training programs, their competitions internationally, um, so that when once they 
finish off their their uh, sports career or when uh, they get injured they have uh, they are prepared and they call, they are qualified to continue uh, continue a productive life so this was the beginning of johan Cruyff institute um, we started, uh, Jan started 20 years ago, an, an alliance with the, uh, the University of Applied Sciences of Amsterdam to offer uh, an official bachelor degree in sport marketing 20 years ago to uh, the very first 35 top athletes in the Netherlands, in, uh, according to the, uh, the Dutch educational system. And this is, was the beginning, actually, um, of the Johan Cruijff Academy. It was called the Johan Cruijff Academy. And from that moment on, uh, we first of all covered uh, the Netherlands. Uh, we opened up two uh, Johan Cruijff Academies uh, in other cities of the Netherlands. In the upcoming years or the years after that, we also uh, extended the portfolio to vocational training programs. So for younger athletes, um, athletes that had like 16 years old and still uh, they, they still exist so they they they, they these are students that have uh, more an average age of uh, 16 years mm -hmm. so um we extended the, the the dutch network with four educational uh, training centers um and then in 2002 we decided as i explained a little bit earlier to also offer postgraduate education not only to athletes because we also noticed that there is uh, there are a lot of professionals working also already within the sports industry that didn't really possess the the solid knowledge a good study program a good master program in sport management um, what we also noticed is that there were a lot of younger people graduates that might have been studying law or that might have been studying business administration or um, uh, physical education or nutrition and that really wanted to know about how do you manage the sports industry so this is where we started also offering uh, um, the postgraduate programs and the master programs uh, in Barcelona in Spanish language, but at the same time also in Amsterdam campus in the English language, which is the master in sport management. And from that moment on, we have been extending our portfolio, uh, not only um, uh, as for the, 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 the target student or potential students that we uh, would like to, uh, to, uh, uh, to cover, but also with different programs, with different knowledge areas. I think we'll go talk about a little, a little bit more about the details later on, but we extended, diversified the program portfolio. At the same time, um, we also extended internationally and we started in the Young Craft Institute in Mexico, um, in Peru, in Sweden. Um, so by the first phase of our international expansion really was like very important having a good portfolio in place mm -hmm. until more or less in 2008, we made a strategic, a strategic move um, because we decided to um, develop e-learning programs. Uh, we saw that there were, was really a big need for sports professionals, but also for athletes to have more flexible study solutions. Mm -hmm. um, so that they could combine and uh, their their sports career, but also their active professional career with their studies. So this is when we started to create, and actually this was the beginning of our um, uh, technological uh, center in Barcelona, which we based in in, head, in headquarters in in Barcelona, and started to develop complete all the programs online. So this is where we uh, initiated our virtual campus, um, and at the same time. Globally, all, all, of, all of a sudden, of course, this was really a globalization of the learning uh, of our learning uh, institution, because now we, um, from that moment on, we're having uh, students from from all over the world um, studying with us. Um, Actually, there are more than 9,000 alumni all over the world, which are now professionals working within different um, different areas and fields within the sports industry. And um, so we're now covering all the all quite five continents also with our agents and representations in, in 14 countries. So this is more or less uh, in 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 a no? um, what we have been. Um, the, how we the, the institution has been developing over the last 20 years right right cool thank you for that well i see that you were one of the the first ones uh there to to go in that space that it's becoming more and more competitive so there are many courses uh trying to cover some of those those, those areas what's 
what would you say from everything that you said there are the main differentiation of, of the Johann Sarp Cryo Institute that people wouldn't find in, in, in other courses? Well, John Kraft, John Kraft, being himself an athlete, is, is sports. Um, John Kraft Institute is all sports. So all the programs that we offer in sport management is sport. The faculty that we have are not only specialists or academics in sports management, but also practitioners. Um, the students that attend the master programs are there, there are different profiles, but there are like 30% of our student base is still uh, um, elite athletes. So we have a mixed class of different profiles and sports is all over. It's in our blood. I would say it's on our blood and in our body. Um, we are not like a generalistic uh, university or a business school um, offering one master in sport management program. <clears throat> we, in total, we have 92 programs in our portfolio um, and everything is sport. So the materials that we use, the cases we use, the examples we use, the sites visits that we organize, the study trips that we organize, the people that we invite, the, the, the entities and our corporate partners we work with are all entities and organizations in the sports industry. So this is very important. Um, right. At the same time, uh, this this large portfolio was which is also flexible and uh, offers blended uh, solutions, blended programs, on campus uh, programs, and online pr programs. Uh, also makes it possible to have a very flexible and I would say nearly personalized learning path for our students. And at the same time, um, although we have been growing substantially over the last twenty years. We think it's very important that the students are receiving a personalized attention. So um, besides the, the scope of our organization, um, it still is very important that the student um, perceives a very personalized guidance. Um, but for example, the online programs have their personal tutor who are available uh, 24, 24 hours, seven days a week. Uh, mm -hmm. There will always be somebody there for you to guide you through the learning process. Um, and um, I think that the the sense that still being a like a boutique academic institution where you find sports, 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 sports all over the place and you really feel comfortable being passionate about sports and wanting to make a further step in your professional career within sports is you feel very comfortable. The athletes right. feel very comfortable, coaches feel comfortable, professionals feel comfortable, graduates feel comfortable. And I think that's because we are very intimate and very personalized and very close with our students great Let, uh, maybe on, on the other on the other side of, of that answer actually there's a question here and i'm going to uh, there's so many that are arriving already that i'm going to start um, asking some some of those anil metin um she says or he or she says First of all, thank you for this online event. Do you recommend someone with little sports background to study at uh, 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 Johann Cruyff Institute? We're talking about athletes and people that are very much into sports, but what about someone that has a little background uh, in, in sports to recommend them to, to go there if that someone is interested in working at the sports industry? So yeah. I think the question is, it, does, does it require to have a previous sport experience or if you just have an uh, interest, um, you could also do one of your courses? Well, actually, yeah. we, ha we have each year and in each program, we have uh, students that have no background in sports at all. So, um, and I, I was just recalling one of the first year students we had in our, in our master program that we, did, what, that we delivered on, on the Barcelona campus. Actually, this was a person who had a finance background and had been working at different consultancies, uh, always in finance. Um, and at some point in his professional career, he really like uh, made made a made a or had a moment of of reflection and say, "How do I? What what do I really like to do in my life and in my professional life? Because this is not my passion. I know about finance, but I'm really not very happy in my job, and I'm now going to take the decision to." reconduct my professional career and I need 
uh, information. I, I need a, uh, an education in sport management to to also um, know about how to manage sport, but also to extend my network within sport. So yes, uh, the answer to your question is, it's not a majority within our classes, but there are people that already have experience in different sectors or in different um, functional areas that really are sure and conf uh, confident and passionate that they want to work within sport. So this, yes, this is, this is a very good first step. Then, um, on the other hand, there are a lot of people, as I mentioned a little bit before, graduates that have been, for example, studying law or had been, have been studying um, uh, uh, so, uh, social sciences um, and don't are not athletes at all and don't really have a sports background, but would like to specialize within sport management. So this is a different kind of profile student um, which also normally in, in all class of the sport master in sport management, for example, which is the most uh, generalistic program that we have, we have a combination of different profiles and student profiles within our class. Um, the thing is that the, or the fact that we were founded by an athlete, the fact is that still 30% of our students are active athletes, means that um, we are sports and we feel very comfortable with athletes, but it's not um, uh, mandatory at all uh, being an athlete to study at the Young Graf Institute. Cool, cool. Uh, thanks for the clarification. There are two very similar questions um, here, um, knowing, wanting to know more about sort of the courses, and, and you mentioned already that, that there are several. Perhaps um, we will be able to cover maybe or mention the ones that are will be represented at the, the virtual event. So Richard Christian wants to know what course institute offer and how long it takes. So there are many, they're online, they're uh, presential, and I think that they have different schedules. I'll, of course, I'll give you the, the chance to talk more about that. Let me just get to the second question here. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I uh, there's a, a few coming in, but anything that you want to mention about um, the, the courses or at least the ones that you're going to be presenting at the, the digital uh, fair, I think are the masters in sports management and sponsorship. Yes, I think perhaps to give a general overview, and it's, it might be clarifying a little bit. Um, mainly, we uh, are the programs that we offer uh, cover four knowledge areas: the knowledge areas, uh, knowledge area of sport management, very generalistic; the uh, area of sport marketing and sponsorship; football business, and coaching. So four. Uh, knowledge uh, areas. Coaching, the last uh, knowledge areas is leadership development. So it's not technical coaching, it's not coaching on the pitch, but it's leadership develop personal development and leadership development. So mm -hmm. in sport management, sport marketing and sponsorship, football business and, and coaching, we have different academic levels within our portfolio. I would say that mainly the, the programs that, uh, that we are going to present during the virtual uh, fair um, are the master in sport management programs. Um, for example, the one that we deliver in, in English on our Amsterdam campus is a program which we start always in September and finishes off in uh, June. It's a master program which has 60 uh, credits and uh, it's completely delivered in, in English on our virtual campus um, covering different areas like strategic management, financial management in sports, uh, leadership, uh, entrepreneurship, innovation, uh, marketing and finance. So it's a very generalistic program. Um, the uh, An interesting program also is the Master in Football Business, which we offer in Barcelona in English, which actually it's a, a specialized master program in football business. And it actually, it is a program which we developed in partnership with Football Club Barcelona, which is very interesting. And one of the ins one of the, the the insights that we're going to give during this master in football business program is uh, the business model of Football Club Barcelona. It's uh, actually um, now taking place here in Barcelona. Uh, it's a modular program, so actually in the 
editions that we have had so far, four editions, people come from all over the world to do the program. Of course, in the current circumstances, it's uh, like what we'll talk about it later, uh, also with some blended uh, formats included and some some solutions that we uh, that we that we found in order to to um, to continue the program. Although we not can be not all everybody can be there uh, face to face or attending mm -hmm. face to face. Um, so, uh, and I think it's also very uh, nice to, to, to mention that uh, there is a master in sport management program within the portfolio, which uh, we offer online completely in English, for example. Um, so that's that's another option, um, which is actually this one is also, this master program is uh, accredited by uh, the Universidad Autónoma de Barcelona, which is the official university in, in Barcelona. So it's an official international acknowledged uh, master title. Um, and I would last but not least, as of uh, at the master program, it's very interesting also to mention that the coaching program, the leadership program that we deliver in Amsterdam, in this case, in English, is also a very interesting program for those people who would like to um, uh, start a journey uh, on per personal development and also to, uh, to, to analyze themselves and being a better leader in and not only sports, but also in, in other areas within within business. So right. um, these are the master programs, um, and, and not to extend a little bit because, of course, the details you, you will that the fair will will have and include all the details of all the programs. But I do think it's important also to mention that the master programs are uh, like let's say that the more longer programs and the, where you really get solid knowledge on the different functional areas. Then we have postgraduate degrees, which are um, uh, 30 credit points. And then there are specialized courses and right. some fundamental courses, which are very short courses. The fundamentals, for example, are offered only online in four months programs. So these are light, uh, light introductory to, uh, courses. Right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's important to mention that uh, if anyone that uh, comes to the to the uh, Education Virtual Expo, which is free to attend, so anyone can check it out. There will be not only the uh, team, a team from the administration of the Johan Cruyff Institute to answer all the, the questions, but also a great thing about it is that there will be some alumni there as well. So people that actually did the course, I see that there's some questions here asking, you know, uh, asking about job placements, about sort of internships and all that. So we're gonna, talk about that um, a little later, but um, there you will be able to ask not only people from the administration, but actually people who studied and um, and have that support from, from Johan Cruyff uh, Institute uh, on, on that matter as well. Now, before I, I'll jump to, uh, I have a few other questions here, but I think it's important to make a clarification here because I noticed there's, I think, a misunderstanding. So Angela Oshoa says, you said that the programs are online, all online. No, we, she did not say that. Uh, I can say, we'll explain that to you. Part of the studies industry is networking. You're right. How do you tackle uh, when delivering that with online program? There are some online programs. So maybe you can talk about, you know, how you maybe can facilitate networking with the industry for people that actually do the online courses. But uh, let's, clarify that there are many of the courses that are not all online, are presential. And, and a, a little bit later, we're gonna talk about, you know, the impact of COVID-19 and how you maybe had to blend a few courses and maybe do a, a part of it online as well. Mm -hmm. But can you please reinforce that it's not all online, that you have presential courses Yes, yes, yes. Of course, I mentioned the Master in Sport Management program, which we offer in English on the Amsterdam campus from September till June. So this is completely face-to-face -face -face program, including uh, side visits to uh, to clubs, to federations, to businesses, uh, venues uh, in the Netherlands. There is a study trip also on the normal circumstances included to Barcelona campus. Uh, which is very nice actually meant to mention because here's when they mingle also with the master in sport management pro, uh, program uh, students that do the the same program here in barcelona so there is an international exchange of students which is a really great opportunity to network and extend your international work uh, network within the sports industry so um and then of course we have the master in football business program which we offer in barcelona uh, in english 
the master in pro the master in coaching program in English, which we offer in Amsterdam in this case. So um, and then there are other courses which are delivered either on the Barcelona campus, either on the Amsterdam campus, or in Peru and Mexico in the Spanish language. Um, this is important to mention. So. Um, Yes, we have a combination of not only online programs, but face-to-face -face programs, which we think as an institution is very important. Um, very important, and, and on the certain on the current circumstances, we can see that, uh, of course, we find solutions uh, in a virtual environment for, for all the situations, but we think that the personal uh, contact all over a study program are, are important and there are and perhaps I can take the the, the opportunity to ex explain a little bit how we how we um, uh, foster the networking opportunities and also the face-to-face -face opportunities uh, under normal circumstances uh, within our students uh, with our students well actually what I mentioned before study trips which are organized from the Barcelona programs to the Amsterdam campus and actually there we also go to uh, to Scotland and visit um, uh, some clubs over there um, are activities where all the international master students are invited to step in um, the and this is also uh, an interesting uh, an, an, an interesting opportunity every year uh, at the kickoff or at the graduation ceremony which we are which we celebrate in Barcelona. There, all the online uh, students, but all the face to face students in Barcelona, I am are invited there. Uh, so there are all of uh, along the the year different opportunities to uh, to come together. I work in sports is, for example, another opportunity where, where, where international uh, masters from all over the place are, are in, all, from all over the world are invited to attend. Um, so, um, and this, this is very important. Very yes, important. De definitely. Um, yeah, so Angela, it's not all, only online. There's online, there's presential. And yet the people that do online also uh, benefit from, from the network. We have received many of the people that do the online courses actually at the, the fair here in Lausanne as well, with the support of the, the Johan Cruyff Institute. So yeah, that's great. Let's talk about then uh, about your partnerships because you have partnerships with several institutions, uh, sports organizations in the world, um, hundreds uh, maybe, you can give more detail. Explain to us what are those partnerships, how they work and effectively how your students and alumni benefit from it. Yes, yes, it's very important uh, for any academic institution to have a good connection to the industry. And for us being a sports organization, we uh, are already by essence and uh, from the start very connected to sports, of course. But uh, we have done a very big efforts to extend our uh, partnerships all over the world and and as you mentioned Joao actually we are now about having 300 partnerships with different sports entities all over the world um, as any academic institution the knowledge transfer and the, the talent transfer between the academic institution in this case Jan Graf Institute and the sports industry is really essential it's essential um, for us because of uh, of the creation and the the possibility to create create knowledge and also to be um, informed and ahead of what's going on within the industry in order to feed our study programs so that the content that the students are uh, sharing uh, are really up to date, are really uh, challenging and really connecting to what's really going on in real life. As Jon always said, uh, you, you can create a lot of knowledge, but if you can apply it, 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 it doesn't have much sense. <laughs> and that's really true. So it should be really applicable. Um, on the other hand, it's very important for our students, and we are aware that you decide to study with us because you really want to make a further step or a next step in your professional careers within sports. So there should be an opportunity and have a good connection to the sports industry and all entities that work within the sports industry. So from federations, clubs, to uh, marketing departments of big countries, uh, companies, uh, media, um, leagues, competitions, um, uh, 
all, and and all all the all the key players that that really take uh, an important role within within our industry. Uh, that's important. So. Um, it's important to have, and, and actually we have been developing this network of sports entities all over the world, where on the one hand, our students can do, and we uh, always want to develop real life cases or real life projects. We also invite a lot of practitioners, a lot of people and professionals that work within the sports industry and do uh, specific roundtable discussions we had last year in the master students for example round uh, table discussions on uh, pedal which is a very popular sport here in spain uh, but also for example on hockey on field hockey um, and then we invite people and guest speakers from the industry to the program and discuss as peers um, with each other but also with the students of course employment is essential and internships are essential. They are not always curricular, so they are not always mandatory. But to the extent as we uh, as we can, it's important that uh, people and we are aware as an academic institution, as Young Craft Institute, that people decide to study with us because they would really like to work within the sports industry, right? So this is important. Um, um, so yeah, just while while you are at it. Maybe you want to talk uh, a little bit about internships for the ones that are mandatory. This is a question from uh, Lavinia Falese. Um, you know that you reach out to, uh, to to the industry. I was actually reached out this uh, this year and had uh, one of your students that did a great job. Hello, Gokal. I don't know if you're watching. Okay. Uh, was excellent. So yeah, maybe you want to tell uh, a little bit more about that, how that worked. Yes, the, the, the official master program in sport management has a, a period of, uh, of the internship, uh, which is mandatory. Um, the details on which which part of the the program, which part of the program, and when uh, this, I will leave up to my colleagues who know a lot about when you can take your internship, how many credits you should cover with your internship. Right. Um, what, what what is important though is um, is that it's important that we with our partners always uh, really would like to have a, a work towards an internship which, which makes sense. So there should be a, a real uh, assignment, there should be guidance uh, by the, uh, the the receiving, the, the recruiting uh, uh, sports organization who's going to have an intern um, uh, with them for a period of time. And on the other hand, also from our side, we uh, we guide and have make a, a tutorial guidance of the student during the internship, which is very, uh, very important. The mandatory internship, as I say, um, is only uh, assigned for the official master in sport management program, which we offer in English online uh, exclusively and in Spanish for uh, for Spanish uh, potential students in on the Barcelona campus. Um, and then in the other programs that we uh, we offer um, uh, face to face, it's not man mandatory, but uh, we will always look for opportunities to um, to to create and these these opportunities for our students. Right. Right. Yes, and, and as you said, I think more details, you know, can be answered by by, by the team at uh, at the fair. Mm -hmm. Let's um, let's talk about the profile then of people of, of your students. So, what do you look for? Perhaps I mean you have a broad number of courses, but if we focus more on at the master's sort of level, what do you expect? What is the type of candidates that um, you're looking to to have? Yes, it's very much as you said, uh, as you say, Joe, it's very much depends on the program. Uh, the Master in Football Business program, which we offer in Barcelona in English, um, in partnership with Football Club Barcelona, for example, is a senior uh, executive, well, senior executive program in the sense that you really have to have a solid experience uh, in a middle senior management position within football business um, to uh, enter the program. Uh, it's an exit program, so it's uh, uh, it really re within, within the classes, within the sessions, we discuss um, um, well, senior senior issues um, on, on on football business. So this is uh, um, more or less the the uh, 
the requirements and the type of profile that we have in our Master in Football Business program. In the Master in Sport Management programs that we offer both in Amsterdam uh, and in uh, uh, online in English, um, we always recommend people to have some professional experience. Um, there are some exceptions where uh, graduates just finished up their graduate uh, their bachelor degrees and in in, in perhaps econ in, in uh, business administration or in in uh, other areas within management and what we will do is always um, with an intake interview really try to uh, understand well what is the aim of the student is what would you what are your aspirations as for just now in this moment in your life to do a master program and we will also if we think that uh, a person it's not the right move uh, advice uh, perhaps that it, not this year but within a few years and first get some experience um, and then start a program with us um, so um, of, over the in generally um, all the people that we Ad, uh, admit actually have a passion for sport. That is something that all, all potential students have in common and all people that uh, would like to do a master program with us are passionate about sport, uh, are very clear that they want to make a next move in their professional career, are willing and really eager to work within the sports industry. Um, so that is important. Experience, at least three years of experience is advisable. We make mm -hmm. exceptions. It depends on what we, what comes up during the intake interview. And right. for for the athletes, um, well, we have some some athletes, uh, well, we have a lot of athletes actually uh, ending up their, their sports career and wanting to make the transition from the sports career to the sports industry. And uh, th there are students and a lot of athletes uh, haven't been able to do, for example, a bachelor degree. It's not mandatory for to have a bachelor degree to enter a master in pro sport management program with us. Uh, is it not? It is not. It is. It is only in the official master in sport management program because it's officially accredited. This is mm -hmm. mandatory. You should. It's mandatory to have a bachelor degree to start an official master program. The master program. Again, just to clarify, let's see. T tell me again, for which one it is mandatory that you need to have a bachelor degree, and for which one you don't actually require a bachelor degree. The official master in sport management degree, which we offer in English online, exclusively online in this case, is mandatory to have a bachelor degree before starting the program, to enter okay. the program. It's a, it's a requirement for admission, admission requirement. The master in sport management program we offer in English in Amsterdam doesn't require mandatory the uh, bachelor degree, prior uh, bachelor degree. And this is, this is something that we, uh, we do this. Uh, there's a purpose why we do this, and this has to do with why why we are and how we were founded by yeah. by an athlete. Um, we don't want to be. We don't want to exclude athletes or sports professionals that have gained over the long, over the years a lot of managerial competencies, a lot of knowledge, and a lot of skills and know how how sports is managed. These people have such an interesting profile and they should have access to a master in sport management program at John Graff Institute. So this is what well, it's, it's a strategic choice. And it's also a choice which is made found uh, based on our core values and why we are who we are. So um, if there's anybody watching or anybody visiting or attending the, the virtual fair who does not have an official bachelor prior bachelor degree, there is an op opportunity to enter a master in sport management program. It will all depend on what you bring into the class, what your aspirations are, how your profile are, and this will be something that we always will see in the intake interview. Great, great, uh, great to clarify that. So there's an opportunity for everyone, really. Um, there is some, some questions here. Well, uh, Ricardo Pardo actually has two questions. One has to do the differences between the master in sports management at Johan Cruyff Institute and the official master's degree in sports management from the Universita Autonoma de Barcelona. Um, do you want to cl clarify that for him before we talk about the scholarship programs that you have? 
Mm -hmm. The official the official, official master degree is um, is something that you will need if you, for example, uh, would like to do a PhD in sport management afterwards. It's an official accreditation by the Ministry of Education of uh, Spain in this case. So if you would like to develop or anybody would like to develop an academic career within sport management, you need to have an official master program and title. Um, it also means, as, as we said earlier, that you also should have a bachelor degree in order to be able to enter the program. So this is uh, this is an important difference. Uh, Content-wise, um, there are not many differences between uh, the official master degree and uh, our own acknowledge, uh, privately acknowledged master uh, degree. Um, perhaps the, the profile of the students is a little bit different in a sense that the master in sport management which is privately acknowledged has more athletes in the in, in the class in general mm -hmm. normally people have a little bit more of experience um so they might have already have been uh, working for years within the sports industry um and uh, well these are the main the main differences and also if you uh in it depends a little bit uh, on the country where you come from, but if you'd like to uh, have uh, a scholarship or you'd like to have your master in Europe uh, funded by your government, then you will most probably need an to do an official master degree. Right. Cool. And he had a, a second question um, about uh, scholarship. And I know that you have a uh, scholarship fund. Is it the Cruyff uh, Athlete Fund? then I don't know if it's only for athletes, as, as the name says, or are there other uh, scholarship schemes uh, for someone that uh, wants to enter the um, Johan Cruyff Institute's programs? The official master degree that we offer in, in collaboration with the Universidad Autónoma de Barcelona has uh, the scholarship program uh, of the university. So, right. uh, and there are, this is something that I would prefer to, to the partner to, to, uh, for the details, because of course you have to uh, have some requirements and uh, to, in order to, to, to be able to, uh, to submit um, a scholarship uh, request. Our own scholarship program, which is uh, the Cruyff Athlete Fund, uh, as, as the name already says itself, it's it's a it's a fund uh, scholarship program for athletes. Um, each year we um, we offer um, ten uh, full scholarship programs in our masters and postgra postgraduate programs online, and this is specially uh, founded by us for athletes who uh, are professional athletes who are um, having their career in uh, minority sports. So there are some requirements. First of all, the athletes should really have a career in minority sports. Um, and also special um, requirement for other candidates for the scholarship program, which is that you are, you have at least 30 years, uh, 30 years of age and mm -hmm. you're willing to make, or you're just at the moment in your life where you're going to make the transition from your sports career to, um, to, um, to a professional career, which isn't your athlete, uh, you're act active being an, ath an active athlete anymore. Right. So, <clears throat> And then we also have uh, special athletes that have special motivations or conditions where uh, circumstances where we say, okay, this is the, you can actually uh, offer your your candidature to uh, to um, step into the scholarship program of the Kraus Athlete Fund. Okay, okay, uh, that's great. There's some more questions coming here, and then we're going to leave the maybe last five minutes or so to see how you adapted to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Actually, Atanas Ivanovsky is interested in about the cost of the programs. What I would say is there are different programs there, suppose with different costs. So Atanas, I will invite you to join the virtual event in two weeks time from the 10th to the 12th of uh, November. And the team there will uh, answer the questions for each specific program or course that you're uh, interested in and i have um, a countryman uh, of yours a mm -hmm. uh, friend of mine roger lodwick uh, is asking how is esports seen at the um, at the Cruyff institute 
yes, we consider esports to be sports. Um, actually, it's um, uh, we recently, well, before summer, we uh, launched a, a MOOC uh, together with our corporate partner uh, Media Pro. Um, on esports um, and um, esports, uh, actually, we're now about to uh, to uh, to, to also deliver an esports course within our master programs um, because it's um, although there is a lot to be structured still within esports, it is uh, a very big part of the future sports industry as we see it. There are a lot of business models which are new to be adopted in esports, uh, other ones that uh, are being taken over by the tra traditional uh, sports uh, business models. Uh, but it is a very interesting uh, audience. It's very interesting also how it is um, initiated, uh, how it will be structured in the near future. And there are a lot of people and a lot of prof professionals needed to see how strategies are well implemented, how we can monetize uh, esports and assets that are being developed there. So yes, definitely, this is an area of growth. It's an area that's the, it's a tend, trend that's here to stay and uh, we're at it. Definitely a hot topic and probably where some people are going to find jobs after they 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 graduate. We're, we're going to our last uh, five minutes. I told you that it will go fast. Yeah. Uh, wow. Uh, let, let's talk about um, how you've been dealing with uh, COVID-19. So can, can you maybe tell us how it impacted? So the course, I mean, I am assuming there was differently your online programs and the ones that you, of course, had in, in, in person, how you adapted, are people still sort of applying and how are you managing the, the new intake? Maybe give us a sense of how you're coping with that. Yes, we when when March uh, the pandemic broke out, we uh, we half of the programs and half of our students were already studying online. So for the online programs, there was no change at all. Um, for the face-to-face -face programs, so the, the programs that we offer in, in Barcelona and Amsterdam, uh, because we already had the virtual campus uh, up and rolling for many years already with our knowledge center, center there, iLibrary, uh, with all the methodology that we already uh, are very used to, to offer, we switched uh, these programs to the virtual campus in 48 hours. So that was really smooth smooth move um, and on the other hand what we also did which i think is in, important to state is that um, there were some programs for example the mastering coaching whereas which which i explained earlier uh, which we deliver in amsterdam in, in english it's a leadership program where the group dynamics and the really the face-to-face -face sessions are very relevant so what we decided is this these programs and these sessions were rescheduled and started again in september um, and all the programs that we offer face to face are just now taking place again uh, in bigger rooms and with all the safety measures that we have to uh, respect of course with uh, the masks with the the, the cleaning the, the all the safety measures that we have to respect so these uh, programs are going on for the time being and um the only thing is that with more distance. So this is what we uh, what what we did so far, and on the same time we also reinforced the content creation. So we started really uh, in in March already to launch a very interesting available uh, for free webinar series on different topics of the sports industry, and uh, well we we made a very fast and very agile move. Right, right. Well, good to hear uh, that you you know keep keep everything sort of rolling. I'm just uh, uh, having a, f a few other questions uh, that came in here. One was specifically about. Uh, let me see if you had um, uh, program about that had to deal with the government issues. Uh, what was that? Governance. It was wasn't the governance. One second, it was was right here. Oh, here, sports policy. So, Paulina Pavis uh, would like to know if there's courses or programs focus on, on sport in sport policy applied to governments. For example, is there any, something specific about it, or are those included in those topics included in other courses? Yes, I would say that there's an elective within the master program, which is uh, governance. 
uh, which is not which goes over what the international um, uh, the topics of the international organisms and how sports is regulated internationally. Um, which is actually sports policy. So it is part of, it's an elective within the Master in Sport Management program. All right, all right. Listen, um, th there has been a, a few more comments here. So Laio Gomez and uh, sent a question, Mazi Henry from, from Paris. Uh, yeah, there's someone here from uh, Mario Lopez from Peru. Thank you so much from, 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 from watching this. Uh, Richard from Indonesia. Um, wants to know, uh, yeah, I think we already answer, answered your questions about, you know, the types of courses and how long it takes. Anyway, I think that uh, the, the important thing is that there will be more uh, information. This wasn't supposed to be a, an exhaustive session. Uh, it's really to give a bit more of a taste of um, Johan Cruyff Institute, everything that you, that you offer. And I think that people want details can, can come to, to the events. Of course. Uh, would you like maybe to, to say some some final words to, to the people that are, that are watching us? Yes, um, well, it's it was a pleasure to be here. It's uh, the time has run really because uh, in one hour I, I can go on for another hour if you'd like because I get very enthusiastic about our institution, as you can uh, as you can <laughs> find out. Uh, of course, my colleagues will um, will uh, uh, respond to any other questions you might have. Program advisors will be there during the fair, and perhaps Joao, I don't perhaps I can suggest to finish off with a video because. I think that images oh, yes. say more than that all the words I can true. say. Yeah. Yes. So and let's, with, let's with, finish. Let's let's. We, let's, we, we so. do have a quick video about the Johann Cruyff Institute here. I would. We're living in a time of constant change when the sports industry is becoming increasingly more competitive. Its impact on the global economy increases every year, as does the need for new leaders capable of managing it. At the Johan Cruyff Institute, we offer you specialized education in sport management, sport marketing, sponsorship, football business, and coaching. But above all, we prepare you to build a more social, critical, innovative, and ultimately better world in which common sense, pragmatism, intuition, and optimism prevail. We believe that challenges are best faced together as a team with everyone inspiring each other for the benefit of all. We have the tools, the experts and the professional connections to pass on our unique knowledge of the sports industry. We are open to the world and promote the international exchange of ideas between students. That is why some of the best professionals have received education at our institution and continue to work together to solve the challenges of the present and the future. We have educated more than 9,000 students. Will you join us? Educating the next generation of leaders in sport management. Great, thank you for, for, for reminding me <laughs> to, 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 to play the video. And I want to say thank you to everyone sort of watching. If you're still watching there, if you want to hit that like button on YouTube, it would help us a lot. And of course, if you want to get the reminders for other videos like this, that uh, will tell you more about the, the programs, you know, subscribe and hit the, the bell sign. We will be here uh, tomorrow again. So uh, just one second, Mariel, don't, don't go anywhere. My last um, message to, to everyone watching, we will be here uh, again. Uh, one hour later will be six o'clock at uh, European time with the European Sport Business School, ESBS from, from Valencia. On Wednesday will be the University of Oregon, and on Thursday will be the FIFA Master. So if you want to know more information about the I Work in Sport Education Virtual Expo, uh, that will go from the 10th to the 12th of November. There's a link uh, in the description below. Just uh, register there. It's free, and you'll be able to talk not only with uh, all the representatives from the courses that will be there, but also with the alumni. So. Thank you so much, everyone, for, for being here, for participating. Marielle, it was a pleasure. I'm looking forward to an opportunity to actually meet you in person. Mm -hmm. uh, Me too. Thank you very much. Tonight.
And uh, and yes, and um, I'm looking forward to continue to collaborating with the uh, Johan Cruyff Institute. Thank you very much. Thanks to everybody. And seeing you soon, I hope. Stay safe. Stay safe.